Does anyone else ever struggle not to offer your helpful advice and ideas for how someone else should be living their lives? Like, I love you for who you are, but don't you think you'd be happier and and more lovable and successful or, you know, fill in the blank if you just did X? The problem is, even though we think we're being helpful, showing them love, we're just shaming them and perpetuating the notion that love is conditional. If we want to experience depth and connection in our relationships that extends beyond pressured expectations and ideals, then we have to follow suit and be a part of the ripple. Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Kira Wackett. Thanks for joining me for another solo episode of the Untethering Shame podcast. You can already tell, but today we're going to be talking about loving someone as they are versus loving them for who we want them to be. Now, I struggle with this uh, a lot, I guess is the best way to say it. I mean, I have this idea of how something should go, how someone should act, what the outcome should be. And it's super hard for me to be open when it doesn't go that way. No, it comes from a place of love and longing for people. I want them to be their most fulfilled selves. I want them to find peace and joy and healing. It's just that sometimes I supersede my own want over their willingness, motivation, and most importantly, desires. I forget that how they choose to live their lives is not my choice to make. And when I come into interactions with expectations on how things should be, I'm simply robbing myself of getting to know the person on the other side of the exchange. And I get lost in frustration when they aren't what I decided they should be in a given moment. Now, when I find myself here, I end up reacting in one of two ways. I'm either mad or disappointed in the other person for not living up to what I had hoped or wanted for them, or I'm dumping on myself for how this is my fault and what I could have done to make the interaction or outcome what I wanted. Neither place feels good, and all it does is create a villain in a story I don't need to write. I get to be disappointed when something goes differently than I planned. I get to feel sad or let down when I see someone hurting and not doing the work I wish they would do. And I have to remember that disappointment results from different expectations and priorities. It doesn't mean one side or party was right or the other party was wrong or that someone has failed because disappointment presented itself. It simply means that the human experience is more complex than we want it to be. So what if we allowed more space for people to be their whole selves? Highs, lows, strengths, growing pains, and everything in between. What if we didn't set such rigid and tunnel-visioned expectations of how someone else should act or live their life? What if interactions didn't have to go a certain way and we just allowed ourselves to be present and in control of the only thing that we can control? Ourselves. I know for me, I'm a much kinder human to myself and to others with way less resentment and compassion fatigue. So I want you to think about this. Where are you placing expectations on other people to act or be or perform in a certain way? And where are you building resentment because how they're living their life and what they're doing looks different from the choice that you would make? What does it look like to love them anyway? What does it look like to accept every aspect of their life as it is and to offer insight and opinion and ideas when they seek it, but stop making it your job to be everybody else's parent, coach, therapist, whatever it is. Your job is to be in the relationship, not to control the relationship. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. I truly appreciate you taking the time to listen and I hope that you found this valuable and that you're walking away with the invitation to cultivate a little bit more insight into how we are showing up and doing this in our relationships and what we could gain for ourselves and in the ways we're showing up with others if we could shift our perspective. Now, I'd love to hear from you everything and anything that came up as you're reflecting about this and also other topics or questions that you want me to explore on the show. So be sure to fill out a comment, send me a voice memo, or just reach out to me even via email so that I can know what's coming up for you and how I can support you in this work. If you found today's episode valuable and insightful, I encourage you to subscribe, leave a review, hit that five-star button, and of course, share this episode with someone you think could benefit from hearing it. 
And if you're ready to take that next step in your own shame resilience journey, be sure to click the link in the show notes to download my free handout, five things shame resilient people do every day and three things they don't. Now, if you're looking for more ways to connect, you're interested in some of the different programs that I have, you'll find links to my website, YouTube channel, and also a link to set up a discovery call in the show notes. So make sure that you look at those as well. Thanks again for tuning in. And remember, change takes time, but every step counts. So stay the course, stay hopeful, and stay committed to your well-being. We'll be back with more insightful discussions to support you on your journey. Until then, take care, and we'll catch you next episode.